They were everywhere. If I'd been able to see and hear them, I could have not been conscious of their presence. No, they would not be lonely. There were too many of them. I saw that bare country before me, the miles and miles of torn earth, the barbed wire, the litter, the dead trees. But the country would come back to life. The grass would grow again. The wildflowers return and trees where now there were only splintered skeleton stumps. They would lie still and at peace below the singing larks, beside the serenely flowing rivers. They could not feel lonely. They would have one another. And they would have us also, though we were going home and leaving them behind. We belonged to them, and they would be part of us forever. I first went to a battlefield with my father um, quite, a, quite about 15 years ago, and he was a veteran at Dunkirk, and I was fascinated by his remembrance of the ground, the curves in the ground. Uh, and this is something I've discovered old soldiers really know about, is the lie of the land. But what in fact happened in my case was that I had a chance meeting with a military historian in Britain, uh, Professor Richard Holmes, uh, who's a leading interpreter of battlefields. And um, we discussed it, and I kept, was coming at it from the point of view of a landscape photographer. And I was interested in photographing the battlefields, and he asked me to take some pictures of one or two battlefields for him. And I suddenly realised there was this whole subject which I knew nothing about. And it then struck me that with 2014 coming on, uh, it was going to be the 100th anniversary of the war. So we, between us, we agreed that what we wanted to do was to document the battlefields as they are today, uh, almost a century after the events, which we, of course, all remember as the First World War. The photographs, I think, fall into three categories. There are those that are deliberately designed to illustrate a quotation that I think is a very important quotation. Uh, there are those which are, um, it's a battlefield like Beaumont Hamel, which one has to photograph because it's so significant, and therefore um, I will go to Beaumont Hamel and photograph it. And there are those which are opportunistic photographs as I'm traveling around. Light is the important thing. Uh, there's no just point in just turning up and taking a photograph and saying I've done Beaumont Hamel. One has got to go back and to try and get light which lends some kind of drama and meaning to the subject. I know one of the photographs took me nine hours to get because it was a bad day, it was just terrible weather and it was literally only in the sort of the dying end of the day as the sun was just setting that suddenly the light was absolutely perfect and it's a shot of a, of a rainbow over Messine Ridge and for me it was a perfect photograph because there's this great column of red light coming up out of the ground of the, the rainbow which was exactly what they described the mines exploding um, at Messine on the day as looking like um, and that photograph literally there are about 10 frames because the weather the sun just light just disappeared so out of nine hours I perhaps got about 45 seconds of shooting light I think there are maybe four or five men left in the world who actually took part in the First World War. And suddenly there's this realization that um, it will cease to be a memory, if you like, and it will part become history in the sense that we will be getting it from books and films. Um, and educationally, I think the modern generation, certainly in Britain, um, it's now part of our national curriculum. And I think it's a very important thing to teach, to teach young people about the consequences of war. These are fields where battles took place. I'm not seeking to show the misery and the, the, the horror of a battlefield. I'm just trying to show that 90 years later, nature has indeed come along and healed it. And the reason for that is, and I'd like to read this quotation. Uh, th th these are the words of uh, King George V when he visited Tynecott Cemetery at Passchendaele in 1922. And for me, I think they're a very important statement Tynecott, as you probably know, it's the biggest Commonwealth war grave cemetery in the world. 12,500 men and 34,000 unknown soldiers. I have many times asked myself whether there can be more potent advocates of peace upon earth through the years to come than this massed multitude of silent witnesses to the desolation of the war. And I think that is the, the key, is that, you know, you would have these battlefields of horror. But nature would come back, the people would still be there, and we would still be remembering them. And I think that is what I'm trying to say with these photographs.